lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? All right. Say that again, because we didn't test your microphone before we got <laughs> no, started here. No, I, well, I was thinking about that as you was doing the intro. I was like, oh, we didn't really see if I was coming in all right. Yeah, we normally it, do that. <laughs> it, yeah, it looks fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> so keep it up. All right. I'll good, do, good job. I'll do my best. <laughs> test, test, one, two. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So, so slow, slow news week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nothing going on in the world. Mm. No, just one of, the, one of those weeks where, you know, no news. <laughs> hey, you know what happened here, though? What happened here? It rained. Yeah, that's news. Because <laughs> it ain't rained in a minute. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a little while. So I got another excuse not to mow the lawn this weekend. Woo-hoo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, like no more than rain what we've had. Like you'd probably be doing good to go on and do it. Yeah, it, it, the ground's just going to absorb it, dude. Yeah, that's true. A- actually, it's been cool enough the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, that I And it's been cool enough and dry enough that my grass hadn't really grown. Yeah, it's been the same way. Well, last time I cut mine, it was all dead because of the drought, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it was crunchy and oh. dusty. <laughs> yeah, it does get dusty. I, well, you probably don't do it first thing in the morning like I do, where oh, there's no. still like a little bit of dew and everything's kind of No, I do the exact opposite. Like, I try to catch an hour before the sun goes down. <laughs> like Oh, but it's so hot then. Uh, I mean, I you know, if you get up like an hour before this or after the sun comes up, yeah, I'm, it's a much more reasonable temperature. I'm not capable of that. <laughs> I but, enjoy my sleep. Yeah, as soon as the sun comes up, I'm up. Yeah, not me. And I only get like a few hours of sleep a night anyway. Wow, Especially now that I can't renew this drug. <laughs> yeah. I just, I got to wake up and sit up and yeah. swallow, drink some water. <laughs> it's so miserable. Yeah, just drink some water. It'll be all right. Yeah, that, I, I do. Yeah. It doesn't actually it doesn't. just like fix the problem there. That's unfortunate. Good old acid reflux. Yeah. Damn insurance. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like they should have notified me if they make a policy change like that. That, <laughs> that, that affects, a drug that's been covered for affects years. Affects a years. drug that you take. Yeah. Well that's that's really the thing. Like they if they made a, if they did make a policy change, then mm-hmm. you should have gotten something and Yeah, some kind of notification. Hey, we hey. see that you have been um, getting a prescription for this drug for six years, eight years, whatever it's been. Yeah. Um, and we just thought you should know that it's no longer covered unless these I, steps are taken. I'd be surprised, man. I bet that's not even the case. I bet it's some kind of computer glitch thing. Where, <laughs> where, like, seriously, I bet that is what it is. Because, mm-hmm. like I say, it, the way you were playing phone tag, it just sounds to me like that's what happened. Is like somebody somebody pressed the wrong key somewhere down the line. You see, that's what I thought too. That's why I thought like if the if the pharmacy just runs it again, it'll be fine. It would be fine, yeah. But apparently, but it's not. in the system that way. Wrong. So. Well, I mean. They would have had to make a change though too. It's the same pharmacy that I, this yeah. doesn't. This is totally irrelevant to her. <laughs> like nobody this, needs to know about me fighting with the pharmacy or my this, insurance. This company. is insurance company. Like this is what you get under insurance. Yeah, you know what, what is kind of terrible about all that is that like I have to I have to have a nice health insurance yeah. because I've got a history of kidney stones and like all this stuff. You use it. <laughs> yeah. So I need to make sure that if something happens, I'm You're uh, covered. I'm covered. Yeah. Um, and I split the cost of my health insurance with my company. Yeah. And, uh, I, I personally still pay more than health for health insurance now than I did for a Cobra extension when I first moved back here after I left Atlanta. Yeah. And the Cobra extensions have always been yeah. extremely expensive. Yeah. But somehow that cost me less back in 2006 than half of the cost of my individual insurance does now. <laughs> the difference there is that's pre-Obamacare versus post-Obamacare. Yeah, that's a big part of it, definitely. Like, that is a big part of it. Like, it's a factor, if, if nothing else. Yeah. So. The Affordable Care Act. And that goes back to the classic rule. Whatever the name of the bill is, it will do the opposite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like you can take that to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Obama said. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess there is one news story. Yeah, there's 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 one hanging out there. 
We've forgotten about Ukraine. <laughs> is that is that what's happened? Yeah, Ukraine doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Because Israel. Yeah. Israel. This is the episode where we lose half our audience again. Like yeah. we do this every so often. <laughs> yeah. This well, it's it's what I would tell people is as as we're having this discussion tonight, and I don't know exactly where things are gonna go, but mm-hmm. I would just kind of caution people, just keep an open mind. Yeah. Like that that's what I would would say. Well, let's let's start with the obvious things. Um, Hamas is a terrorist organization. Yeah. Period. Like no, I, Hamas is a terrorist organization. Um, what they were doing, what uh, it, certainly some of them um, were doing during this attack on Israel, attack within Israel. I don't know how to phrase this exactly because, well, we'll get around to it. Anyway, um, the indiscriminate uh, killing of women and children and and regular civilians and the um, hostage taking and all this stuff, uh, like a lot of this was just absolutely brutal and um, can't be justified in any way. Yeah. No, I wholeheartedly agree. Absolutely believe people should be held accountable for this. Um, This was really terrible and I would condemn it no matter who was doing it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but just like with the Ukraine thing, the idea that this was an unprovoked attack is fallacious. Yeah. Like, well, it's, it's, it's to ignore the history yeah. and it's, it's the same thing that happened with Ukraine where, People, government, the media, whoever it is, just acts like history started from the first attack. Yeah, and history started on Saturday. Yeah, for for this. Yeah, um, which is is certainly not the case. The uh, the Israeli government has been brutalizing the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza. Yeah, for a long time. Yeah, um, there are. Uh, frequent attacks into Gaza from Israel. And this is another thing, like the way it's presented all the time is so bizarre. And I, they were talking about it on, um, the no agenda show and saying, um, you know, they're saying that this is Israel's nine 11 or Israel's Pearl Harbor. And, and John C. Dvorak was saying jokingly, well, I don't hear anybody saying it's Israel's January 6th. Yeah. Um, cause you know, that was the most terrible attack in that, the U S yeah, history. Exactly. Uh, but in a lot of ways, like that's a more appropriate comparison. Yeah. Um, because it's an attack from a people that live within the borders claimed by Israel. Yeah. So they're essentially residents. And this is something I've always been confused on. I think we talked about it the other night. So, so Gaza is or isn't part of Israel. Well, officially. Officially, no. Okay. Um, officially, it is occupied territory. Uh, so in the 1967 Six-Day War, um, Israel um, took three sections of Palestinian territory, um, them being Gaza, which had belonged to Egypt, okay. uh, the West Bank, which had belonged to Jordan, and the Golan Heights, which had belonged to Syria. Okay. All right. So I seem to remember something about the Golan Heights recently. Did yeah, Trump, Trump, uh, Trump accepted or recognized Israel's annexation of the Golan Heights. Okay, that's what that is. What it um, was, yeah. Now that the other part of that is that that I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on this. I didn't double check it, but so Trump um, recognized Israel's annexation of the Golan Heights. I, th- I believe that Israel has annexed the West Bank and Gaza as well. Okay. But it hasn't been recognized. But it's just not recognized internationally. Yeah. Um, but if they've annexed the territories, yeah, then they're claiming that they're part of Israel. Yeah. So they should be like so, recognized at least by Israelis yeah, as so, part of the country. So what we're saying is that this is a civil war, really. Yeah. Um, and probably a more appropriate comparison would be like if um, the uh, indigenous Americans started attacking the areas around um, the uh, 
Oh, why can't I think of the word? Um, the um, come on, Gary. You I'm, gotta, I'm trying, but you I got help me out. I got here. nothing here. Dude. Um, the not reservations. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I follow you. So that's uh, although I mean the U.S. government doesn't control the reservation territory in the same way that that Israel controls. Gaza and the West Bank, particularly Gaza. We should focus on Gaza. Gaza is the worst of the group. Yeah, because that's where, where the real action is. Yeah. Um, now, all of those territories are, are military occupied or under Israeli military control. Yeah. But Gaza is under very strict um, military control. It's essentially like it's blockaded and um, besieged, Yeah, essentially. Uh, so Israel controls the borders, um, except for the Egyptian border. The Egyptian border is closed. Um, and the Israelis control really everything that goes in and out and people can't just move through the territory. Yeah. So, and when I say everything that goes in and out, I mean, they control water supply, electricity. Gaza only produces 15% of its electricity. The rest is, um, is provided by Israel, except yeah. when they don't. Yeah. Um, they uh, the food um, enters Gaza through Israel. Water enters Gaza through Israel. In fact, um, the Israeli government um, only allows eighty liters of water per day per resident to enter Gaza. Um, and just for comparison, that's about a quarter of what the average American uses in a day. Yeah. Um, the average American uses about 300 liters of water a day. Um, so, you know, the Gazan residents talk about having to choose between cleaning and eating because yeah. you can't use the same water for both. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, so it, it is, it is essentially Israeli territory, uh, ostensibly, um, the, there's a Palestinian authority that has, uh, government control there, but not really since Hamas won the elections, um, the Israeli government has kind of rejected that they have any kind of sovereignty, have any kind of authority. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of the situation there. Um, so I'm just, and you may, I'm sure you probably don't even have an answer for this, but I'm just curious, like why why do the people of Gaza stay? Like, are they? I mean, I get you own land there and it's your home, but like, I mean, it's terrible there. Why well, they're refugees just, to start with. Are they? Yeah, uh, they're mostly refugees to start with. So in 1948, um, they had the, the Nakba, uh, yeah. is what the Palestinians call it. Um, Israel calls it Israeli Liberation Day or something <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> so they celebrate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what happened was um, um, Jewish militias... Uh, started driving Palestinians off of their land. Now, the Nakba itself isn't really just like a day, although most of it happened uh, from like 47 to 49. Okay. Um, but it really kind of covers the entire displacement of the Palestinian people that lived in the in the land. Yeah. Um, so originally something like 50 per, 55% of Palestine was granted to Israel to 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 be the Jewish state of Israel. Yeah, to the Israelis, um, p- Israeli people, yeah. But... Uh, but it, it the only like ten percent or ten or ten or twelve percent of that land was owned by Jews. No. Um, so they had to get the rest of it, and they did it by force mostly. Yeah. Um, so they drove something like seven hundred thousand, three quarters of a million people off of their property. Yeah. Um, that became refugees all over, uh, including in the West Bank and in Gaza. Yeah. So um, the majority of these people ended up in Gaza. And the I don't West know Bank. that a majority. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think probably a majority of them ended up in like Jordan and Syria um, yeah. and adjacent countries. Yeah. Um, but certainly a per, some a people. Percentage were, of yeah. Them. Yeah. Now, at this point in time, um, Gaza is one of the most densely populated pieces of land on the planet. Well, that's what um, I thought. Like, I remember hearing that at some point. They have a really high uh, reproductive rate. It's yeah. like um, 2.91, where most of the developed world is like 1.4. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Um, and uh, there's about 2 million people living in Gaza now, half of which are children. 
Wow. So, you know, a million children and a, a million others. Man, if that like rate keeps up, that's going to be a problem. Well. In itself, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there, there is an overpopulation problem already. And of course, the resources are severely limited by the Israeli government. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's also one of the most impoverished places on the earth. Well, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's, a, uh, there's a really great documentary um, that Max Blumenthal and Dan Cohen did after the 2014 war between the, the Palestinians and, and the Israelis. Basically the last time this happened. Well, it isn't the last time it happened, actually. But, oh, really? But it's, it was a big one. It was like uh, almost two months of fighting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember that. Like, I rem- in 2017, like, I do remember. Well, and, I guess it was around then. I don't know. Yeah. And you have to, the, to bear in mind here, too, that um, it's, it's Gazans using homemade rockets and stones and slingshots and... I mean, they, they have some small arms, yeah. certainly, but not a whole lot. Like, most of it is is really pretty primitive. So you don't um, buy into the idea that um, Iran was uh, we, supporting this? No, we'll get to that. I, okay. I, I mean, to, I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I, I, and, and just for the listener's sake, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions through this because while I do have knowledge of all of this and I have followed it some— I'm not an expert on any of this. Yeah, I don't like think this, Iran's upset about this. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but it, it upsets the balance a little bit because I- Iran and Saudi Arabia are coming closer together, while Saudi Arabia and Israel are coming closer together. Yeah. Um. So it can create some some diplomatic waves that that could really derail some of the positive diplomatic movement that has been going on in the Middle East. Okay. Um. So you know, China has kind of gotten Iran and Saudi Arabia at the table together and gotten them to normalize relations. And, um, and Saudi Arabia was normalizing relations with Israel at the same time. And so just by proxy that could have smoothed the relations between Iran and, uh, Israel by sharing an ally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know at what least happens on paper, right? Yeah. I don't know what happens from here uh, yeah. on that. Um, so okay. it, it could, it could certainly cause some problems in, in that sense, but no, I don't, I don't think Iran was behind it. Okay. Um, I mean, I've heard that put out there. That's the reason I bring it up. Well, I, I, so we may as well just like jump into some of the propaganda because this is war again and you have to be aware of, um, of some of the just nonsense or fabricated stories that get out there. And there are two big ones right now that I've seen. Okay. Um, one is the story that the uh, that Hamas was beheading babies uh, as they were going. Have you had you heard that? You know, this got like a lot of traction for a couple of days. There's being I, I hadn't, blown up I hadn't heard that specifically, so no. All right, so there was the story that came out that um, that Hamas had uh, gone through this settlement area and was beheading everyone, women, children, even babies, and there were forty babies beheaded um, or something like that. Yeah. Um, Max Blumenthal did an article on it at the gray zone. Um, it turns out that that story came from a single source in the I- Israeli defense force, the IDF, um, who is also a radical Israeli settler who had called for Palestinian villages to be wiped out in the West bank a few years ago, yeah. um, and had, uh, incited a riot that, that ended with, uh, Palestinians being injured and property being damaged and destroyed. Yeah. Um, and so forth. So he was this, this guy was the single source for this story that, that the news, um, put out like without really looking into. And since then the IDF and the Israeli media have both, uh, Retracted. admitted that there's no evidence for the claim whatsoever. And that when they went through those same areas, they didn't see any of this. Gotcha. Okay. So it was, a probably Just, a complete fabrication. Yeah. Um, and then the, the big one is the Iran one, uh, which is, there was a wall street journal article, um, claiming that they, uh, that they had evidence that this was, um, 
orchestrated by Iran. Well, that, now that one I've heard a lot. Like that's been a talking point, let's say. Yeah, well, that's a big one because uh, for whatever reason, there's a whole bunch of neocons that have a hard on for Iran. Yeah, exactly. Um, you took and, the words right out of my mouth. And they have been looking for an excuse to uh, to escalate with Iran for a long time. So most yeah. of the time, it's been their nuclear weapons program that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in fact, I, I listened to today, I listened to uh, Megyn Kelly interviewing Ted Cruz. That was one of the most frustrating interviews I've ever heard in my entire life. Really? Both of them are full of it. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. The, and I'm really like, I, I like Megyn Kelly as an interviewer generally, but this is yep. one of those situations where she, she's drunk the Kool-Aid on, okay. on this. Um, and you know, she's talking about, can you believe that any group of people would kill innocent women and children like this? And I'm like, do you have any idea of the history of what's been going on in Gaza yeah. that the Israelis have been doing? Like yeah. the, you know, this 2014, um, 55 day conflict that happened. It ended when it ended, there was something like 2,500, uh, Palestinians dead. Yeah. Um, and it was like 500 of them were children. Yeah. Well, S- something like that. And then even the, what I'm hearing right now is that there's over a thousand Palestinians dead in Gaza, uh, which will be mostly civilians. They're also saying that they have like 1200 Hamas fighters dead in Israel. So yeah. I, I think that those are two separate numbers that there's like 1200 Hamas fighters that were killed in Israel yeah. and that there's over a thousand people that have been killed in Gaza in the resulting strikes from, from Israel into Gaza. Yeah. And, um, and they're claiming that about a third of the dead in uh, Gaza are children. So like 300 of them are children. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Um, well, and the, the problem I've seen, at least just from talking to people and, and even some of the news coverage, is just the whole idea that just the dehumanization, yeah. that, that these people are just animals. Like, I, I, like I've heard that. Too many times, mm-hmm. like it, well, and there's been you know the Lindsey Grams and so forth of the world that say we should just flatten all of Gaza. Yeah, well, and I've heard that. Like I've I've heard that multiple times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, there's no resolving this conflict. Kill them all, kind yeah. of attitude, and that it's. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to anybody who's represented by somebody who's saying that should vote that person out immediately. Actually, yeah. there should be immediate recall if you have that option, yeah. because no representative of the U.S. government should be talking about that kind of collective punishment, which is absolutely, e- without question, a war crime. Well, like, for either side, uh, like yeah. that's that's the point I would like to make. Like, regardless of mm-hmm. which side you're referring to, like that type of behavior is not acceptable. Absolutely. I mean, I that's I mean, just call me what you want, but that's where I'm at. No, you're and you're right. Um, there. There is a difference between the, uh, there is a moral difference, I would say, between the the groups of fighters that came across the border and were shooting up um, music concerts and, you know, oh, yeah. indiscriminately targeting civilians and the, the militants that crossed the border and were attacking police stations and army bases. Yeah. Like, those aren't the same thing. Completely agree. Yeah. Um, but the idea that... Uh, that Hamas employs these tactics of attacking civilians indiscriminately and Israel doesn't is just not true. No. And in fact, I was, well, okay, let me address the Iran thing before we get too far down that path. So this Wall Street Journal article um, claimed that the attack was directed by Iran, but it was using a single anonymous source um, as its evidence. And that, and, and since then, both the Israeli and the U.S. intelligence says that there's no evidence for the claim that Iran orchestrated the, these We're attacks. Behind this, yeah. um, and say that the specific claim in the article that there was a meeting, um, oh, now I can't, in Beirut, I think, right. um, a couple of months ago, where the go ahead was given from the IRGC to Hamas to go ahead and launch this attack. Um, they say specifically that there, the, the, that there's contrary evidence to that essentially yeah. because they followed the big wigs in Hamas and the IRGC and that this meeting didn't happen. It was not that. Yeah. 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 Um, so those are the two big pieces of propaganda that I've seen out there right now. And they're both false. Yeah. But they're being repeated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And, and so just bear that in mind because there, there are people that want to parlay this into a war with Iran. I don't understand why. Yeah. Uh, the, this interview with Ted Cruz, he's talking about how, um, oh yeah, this would be the other big one, I suppose, is that the U S funded this attack by giving the $6 billion to Iran. That's actually the connection they're trying to make. And yeah. this is a, one of those things that really frustrates me about this is that, you know, Ted Cruz got on there and there's this like real atrocity and tragedy that's occurred. Yeah. And the first thing he says is those Democrats mm -hmm. did yeah. this. And, and Megyn Kelly has the gall to say, and you know, this is all verifiable. What he's saying, he's talking about votes in Congress to give the money and, you know, yeah. to cancel this or that. Yeah. Um, and she said, this is all verifiable. This isn't partisan Ted Cruz up here talking. <laughs> no. When it clearly is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. regardless of whether it's true or not, yeah. when your, your statements about it are the, the Democrats on the other side or the Republicans on the other side, whichever it happens to be, yeah. are at fault for this, then it's partisan, even if it's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's there's always that, right? Yeah. So it, it frustrates me to no end that these people immediately use it to justify some political narrative yeah. um, or goal. Yeah. And um, and in this case, even that's a a big lie. Um, you know, the the six billion dollars that uh, that Biden freed up is actually Iran's money. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's just Iran's money. We've and also, covered that on the podcast. It's yeah. just stolen. Yeah. And they haven't gotten any of it yet. Yeah. <laughs> this, oh. um, you know, there's, they're talking now that, you know, this guy who planned this whole thing, this Hamas leader that planned this whole thing started it in 2021. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, Ted Cruz goes on to say it's because, uh, you know, Biden's intent on getting back into the, this, um, JOCP. Yeah. The JCPOA. Okay. The Iran nuclear deal, um, which is also a lie. He's definitely not intent on it. He could have well, gotten no. right back into I it with the same say. terms as soon as he stepped into office, if he wanted to, but he hasn't, exactly. he keeps trying to impose new terms on it. Um, and Iran's not happy with it and they're not signing it. Yeah. So he's not intent on getting back into the JCPOA. That's just a lie. Yeah. Um, and of course the next line out of Ted Cruz's mouth is, and uh, you know, he's intent on getting back into the JCPOA, which will make it possible for Iran to build nuclear weapons, which it'll do the exact opposite of because it actually imposes more yeah. um, restrictions, uh, more restrictions than the UN restrictions that are already on a nuclear country. Yeah. Um, so they would be subject to, uh, to more inspections and more safeguards and so forth. It would make it Which that much harder. Which was the whole idea behind it. Exactly. Like that was the whole reason it was set up was to try to at least quell some of this about the, you know, the Iran building the bomb. Development, yeah. yeah. And if, you know, regardless of everything else, else Iran is a theocracy. Yeah. It, it is ruled from the top down by religious leaders. And the, the, the Grand Ayatollah, Khomeini, yeah. um, who is the religious leader of the country, and therefore the religious leader of the government and everything else too, yeah. um, said that the use or employment of weapons of mass destruction is against the tenets of Islam. Yeah. Uh, actually, Com Khomeini said that originally, and Khomeini has, yeah. who's replaced him now, um, has reaffirmed it. Yeah. Um, that it's against the tenets of Islam. So if you really believe that this is a theocracy, that it's just ruled by these crazy religious nuts. Yeah. It's against their their own commands. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To use these things, so, and they had the opportunity during the 1980s war with Iraq, where yeah. Iraq was was actually employing chemical weapons against the Iranian uh, military. Yeah. Um, weren't they using like mustard gas and stuff like that? They were using some chemical weapons that the U.S. helped them to develop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Iran, um, although they had the capability of developing these things on their own, they didn't. Yeah. And so, they would have been, I mean, I wouldn't say that they were justified, but they could make a justification of using them when they were being used against them. Yeah. Um, but they didn't because yeah. they were sticking by this religious law yeah. that says that it's against the tenets of Islam to use weapons of mass destruction. And we're getting off track here, but... Um, it's important though. Yeah. The point is that, that Ted Cruz is a liar. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, that's the point here. Um mm. And so I want to, 
I want to emphasize again that um, that the the Palestinians have been brutalized by the Israeli government for a long time. Yeah. Um, that they, and in fact, the Israeli government has made comments in the past, like that they limit the number of calories that go across the border, um, because they want them on the edge of starvation. Cause you know, starving people will rise up against you, Yeah. but not quite starving people. They're pretty easy to keep docile. <laughs> keep, to keep in line. Yeah. Um, but while there is, there is no justification for, for the actions that, that happen. Yeah. But it's not to say that there's not a reason. But there is a reason, exactly. Same way with Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so, yeah, Hamas is a terrorist organization, but there's an old Lakota proverb that says, force, no matter how concealed, begets resistance. Yeah. And in this case, the, the force that it, the Israelis are employing against the Palestinians, it's not hidden in any way. It's overt. Yeah. Like everybody, it's clear to everybody. And people get angry every time. It's the terrorist math thing. Yeah. Like you kill two, you get 20. Yeah. You know, as people have their apartment buildings bombed, even if they're notified in advance, which yeah. Israel actually does. Yeah. They have the cell phone numbers of everybody in Gaza. Yeah. And when they're about to destroy an apartment complex, they send a message out to the people living there yeah. and say, we're about to destroy your home. Get out. Wow. Yeah. And so, but even if you get out and you have your life, Everything else you had has just been lost. It's gone, yeah. I mean, just put the shoe on the other foot. Just think if you got a phone call that the, you know, some government, U.S. or otherwise, was going to bomb your house. <laughs> you yeah. get out alive, but you just lost everything you own. Right. It's, yeah. So um, I actually read a, uh, we talked about this in terms of Afghanistan too, the um, people, um developing psychological issues, PTSD about hearing drones overhead all the oh, time. Yeah, you remember yeah, we talked about do, that a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. Um, I actually read an article that, that said that something like, like around 90% of Palestinian adolescents have some form of PTSD. Oh, they'd have to. Yeah. I mean, I believe that, you know, that they grew up in war and, yeah. and, well, and, and on the flip side of that, I'm sure it's the same on the Israeli side. I'm sure that the youth of Israel have the same type of PSD from just like, mm -hmm. you know, living in... I mean, a, certainly in the border areas. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and like I say, I'm, it's not... That's just where they're at. Like, it's just... There's got to be a way to unwind this. <laughs> well, that's the big question. And, um, and I don't really have an answer. Um, there's a lot of historical grievance here on both well, sides. Uh, both sides have been brought up to hate the other side. Yeah. Um, I, like, how do you unwind such a thing? I, I will say this though. And I know there's been like Megan Kelly and Ted Cruz were both complaining about people calling for a ceasefire because yeah. all they're really saying is that, uh, Israel can't retaliate. Yeah. You know? Um, and they were saying, and Megyn Kelly's thing was like, it would be like calling for a ceasefire, uh, when after nine 11, while the towers were still burning. <laughs> That's and just so, absurd. Uh, well, I don't know that it's absurd, but I, here's the question that I would ask you specifically. Okay. All right. So I got a question for you on this, Larry. Uh, all right. Um, in all the things that were done in, as a reaction to the nine 11 attacks by the U S government. Yeah. Do you think maybe, do you, do you have any regrets about some of the things that were done by the U S government as a reaction to oh, 9 11? Absolutely. Um, like maybe the invasion of Iraq. Do you think that that was maybe well, a mistake in so retrospect? I'll, I'll tell you for me personally. Mm -hmm. And, um, like I say, so for me personally, the, the question is for you. So, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so, I was never for the Iraq war. Mm -hmm. I was I was against it from the beginning. For for me, I do feel bad because I did support the Afghanistan war. I thought that that was at the time when it was going on, I thought that was the righteous war. Mm -hmm. They attacked us, we should go we need to go get them. Um now once I learned as I learned over time more and more about what really happened, 
you know, I feel bad for supporting that. Yeah. Um, but then maybe that was misguided as well. It was. Now, how and, about and it, it how was about the ignorance things, on my part? Yeah. Well, how about the things that were done domestically? Um, the rise of the security state and the surveillance state. Yeah. Like, oh. have some misgivings about that now, oh, yeah. maybe? Well, yeah, I've never um, supported them in the begin, to begin with. Like, yeah. I've arguments constantly with people over that because in real time people were all for that yeah like i was i was in the minority then well that's kind of the point right so maybe it actually would have benefited us benefited us to have a little ceasefire and yeah. try and work things out and think things through and, and react logically instead of emotionally. Yeah. Like maybe we wouldn't, this country wouldn't have made some of the mistakes that it made. Oh, 100%. probably would have anyway, but you know, it's possible yeah. not. So, well, because the, the reason we would have made those mistakes is because we had a media that was, because that's the reason I believed what I believed in real time was because what I was being told from the media was, you know, they hate us for our freedom. I'm like, well, you know, they're going to hate me for my freedom. We're going to go take away theirs, you know? Um, and but, take away ours at the same time. And take away ours at the same time. Well, that was the argument I was making in real time. If they yeah. hate us for our freedom, why are we taking it away? Yeah. <laughs> They're letting them win. Yeah. So. So maybe it's not such a bad comparison, but maybe the answer is, yeah, maybe you should step back for a second and assess things and figure it out no. before you go running off half cocked. Well, cooler heads always prevail. Like, I mean, and the way you get there is you is you give it some time and like look over the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the answer to this is. And the truth is, is that this is at least on many levels, a religious war that cooler heads will never prevail. In it's those it's type an of ethnic situation. war. Okay. I don't think it's a religious war. It's an ethnic war. Okay. It's not, it's not Jews versus Muslims. Yeah. Um, it's Israelis versus Palestinians. It's yeah. not, and, you know, the weird thing is that that Israeli is a nationality, but not an ethnicity. Uh, Jewish is a religion, not an ethnicity. That, that, like, the, the question that I always ask people about this, and kind of the origins of this conflict are that after World War II, the um, having been persecuted uh, European Jews were granted this land um, by the UN. Yeah. But the land didn't belong to the UN. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the land already had owners, mm-hmm. um, but the land was given to the, to the Jews. And the, the strange thing about it is that I think that the, there's racism all around. I think that the, um, the land was given to the Jews by the Europeans because the Europeans didn't want the Jews in Europe. <laughs> Well, <laughs> but go be the, somebody else's problem. Is yeah. that kind of the idea? <laughs> yeah, <here? laughs> exactly. Um, and here's another one that'll get us in trouble. Uh, there's a, a guy I was talking to, um, uh, this was a year or so ago, I think. And we got to talking about the Israeli Palestinian issue. And, um, he said, well, you know, the Jews have been, uh, persecuted, oppressed, and kicked out of over a hundred nations that they have that they have lived in over time. I said, well, that doesn't give them the right to do that to somebody else, though. Yeah. And he was like, no, you don't understand what I mean. Yeah. And I said, okay, I guess not. What do you mean? He said, maybe there's a reason that all of these countries, that all these countries don't want the Jews there. Yeah. And I like I hadn't I don't I'm, I don't buy into this necessarily. <laughs> all the Jews that I've known have been very nice people, but yeah. But it is an interesting question. Yeah. If there's like, <laughs> something in their nature that caused... Yeah, like, or the not, way they organize... Indiv- and not individually. Yeah, I no, mean, no, as the, a group. The way they organize their society or whatever that, yeah, that, that causes infringes this. on others around them. Or, I don't know. I, can't, I mean, I don't know either. Yeah, I'm I just, can't imagine what it would be. It's just an interesting question. Like, I'd never had anybody pose the question yeah, in that way. It, it, yeah, when you when you frame it in that frame, it kind of looks a little... Yeah, like, then I was like, There's something in here I'm not... Catch it. <laughs> yeah, I was caught off guard, and I, yeah. you know, I wasn't. Yeah, and I, I, I still don't know what to think of that, but it, yeah, like the question intrigues me actually. Yeah, like yeah. I wonder if there is something here. Yeah. Um, I, I got distracted. I don't know what we were talking well, about. Well, we were talking about how to unwind this. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, the land was land that already belonged to people was given to other people. Yeah. Um, to start with, and then. The the Israeli government and I I do try to 
be specific about this. Yeah. Like that I'm opposed to the Israeli government. Yeah. I'm not opposed to the existence of Israel. I'm not opposed to Jews. Yeah. I don't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. I'm opposed to the state. Yeah. And I mean, when I say the state, I don't mean the state of Israel as in, uh, you know, as this like reified entity. I mean the government. Yeah. Just like I always am. It's yeah. always the government's fault. Well, right? and, in, and in this particular instance, this government is just a really bad government. Well, like, and I mean, the, well, the problem that we run into now is because like there's there's so much power in the anti-Semitic trope. Yes. And I want to be really clear here, and you may disagree with me out there, but um, being opposed to the Israeli government is not the same thing as being anti-Semitic. Yeah. Yeah. But it's being presented that oh, way. Oh, it's absolutely legally. presented that way. I mean, one of the things that it's Ted Cruz that said... Way everywhere. Yeah. One of the things Ted Cruz said is that they developed a bill that said explicitly that... Um, that it was anti-Semitic to join the BDS movement, the Boycott Divest Sanctions movement. Yeah. This is a guy who's a Republican. Isn't he supposed to be free market? <laughs> this is like the most free market protest of anything is to just divest and... and I, well, I don't believe that, in the sanction that, part, that but tells the you Boycott you... Divest part is yeah. absolutely a free market response to a, a, a free market protest. But that's the whole problem with the Republican Party as it stands anyway, is they talk about these principles, but they don't... Yeah, follow what, through with them. They don't truly well, believe them. What they mean by free market is not what we what mean we by mean. free market. No, no, it's absolutely true. Um, so the, yeah, this land was given away and then the, the Israeli government has created ghettos on the edges of their territory in the West Bank and in Gaza, particularly Gaza, like akin to mm. the Polish ghettos that you would hear them talk about um, you know, before and during World War II yeah. that were so terrible. Yeah. And it's 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 amazing to me that they would have this history of oppression and then turn around and employ it on another group. Yeah. And it and it's about them being Arabs. Yeah. That's it. It's That's, not you yeah. know, it's not about them being Muslim because a lot of people don't know this out there, but twenty percent of the Palestinians are Christian. Yeah. Like one out of every I, five Palestinians is Christian, not Muslim, but yeah. they're oppressed just as much as the Muslims. They're being oppressed because they're Arabs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just insane. Um, but you, you can't expect to treat a people this way for so long and not have a reaction. Yeah. And that's not to approve of the reaction. I'm just saying that you have to, you have to expect it. Yeah. And then we can get into some of the conspiracy theory stuff here as well. Now, Egypt said that they told the Israeli government that this was coming. Yeah. Um, that they told them like 10 days ago. Now, this is what I suspect it was in, in reality yeah. is that Egypt told the Egyptian government told the Israeli government, we're hearing a lot of chatter. We think something big's coming. Yeah. That's like too non-specific to do anything about. Yeah, like can't. I imagine there wasn't any real specificity about what might happen. And, and, and how and so often forth. do they probably get these type yeah. of memos from other other groups? Like, hey, you know, mm -hmm. we're hearing a lot of chatter. We think something may be coming. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, well, we hear that a couple of times a year. So yeah. <laughs> so, but Mossad is supposed to be one of the premier intelligence agencies in the world. Yeah. And it does make you wonder, like, how an operation that clearly required a lot of planning and a lot of coordination could have been put together off. and executed without their knowing. Yeah. The old, the old fashioned carrier pigeon, no social media. We yeah. Just go, we go, we'll send the Raven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Smoke signals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next building that, uh, that Israeli bomb, the Israeli bomb, then we'll just like, we'll create smoke <laughs> we'll, signals. We'll, we'll send some signals up with, yeah. with instructions on how to proceed. Yeah. Um, so there, there is an idea out there that, and I, I do want to come back to the how we resolve this. So I do too. I'm not, so I'm I've not, got. More I'm not to, letting this go. I've got but, more to say on that, but I think that's yeah. a good closing thing. Yeah, um, and we're getting close. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we are. Uh, so um, the um, the Netanyahu government has been in trouble. Yeah. So, and this is something that, like, just talking to regular people, like I do. 
people didn't realize that because every time I've brought this up that, you know, there's been protest for months and months yeah. about what Netanyahu has been doing as far as dissolving the courts and yeah, consolidating power. Yeah. Um, and people were just like, didn't know. And my point has and all... And he and his wife's corruption. And yeah, like, oh. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yeah. But the people in the streets is the and the, the ju- judicial deform is kind mm-hmm. of what I've been yeah. telling people about. Mm-hmm. And they they didn't know that was going on, which is fine. But to think that, like, that's all done now. Like, the, the Israelis protesting, like, this is good for Benjamin Netanyahu. Yes, sort of. Okay. I think I, I I think for right now that's correct. In the short term, you're right. Yeah. Um. He, his government was in trouble. Now you've got an outside uh, well, threat it, to deal with. You the get the rally the around the flag. Yeah. Uh, thing. So everybody's getting behind Netanyahu. Yeah. Um. To oppose the Palestinians. And yeah, you're yeah. right. I, I think in the short term it does benefit him by taking like by distracting. Yeah. But in the long term, I don't think that it's good for him. How because, is that? Because once things are set, once Israel does its response and, and you know, destroys another 100,000 homes in Gaza. Yeah. Like they did in 2014. Yeah. Um, then people get to stop and think, hey, there's this really terrible, unprecedented even attack by the Palestinians under Netanyahu's watch. And it watch. happened under your watch? Yeah. yeah. There's always that. Do you think that, so this is just me asking questions, do you mm. think that this is all, that this that's all this is going to be? Or do you think that this is a real like watershed moment where something big is going to happen with Gaza? I don't know. Um, I mean, I can, I can see it, this being that moment where we're like, okay, this is where everything changed. It could be, but I, I don't think so. Um, okay. I think that, you know, uh, this is one of those things that I think for the Palestinians, the power is in the reaction that they get out of Israel. Yeah. And I think that Israel realizes that. Yeah. Um, and I think that Israel stops short of pushing so far that the national, the international community turns against them on this. Okay. Um, and I don't think that they invade Gaza in any real way. Yeah. Because that's, I don't think that's a war they want to fight. Yeah. Uh, that's even, it even seem with like it. unlimited U.S. support. Yeah, even with unlimited U.S. support, I, I think a um, a house to house fight in one of the most densely populated pieces of land in the world that's just mostly an urban sprawl. Yeah, they would lose so many people. Well, and and now that you just you mentioned it, thinking about it, not only that. Just think about the cell phone video and stuff that starts coming out of there. Yeah. And, and, and even how without that, that, like even if they, if they block all those signals, yeah. you still have like anytime an Israeli tries to walk down a the street, they're a sniper target. Yeah. Like anytime an Israeli soldier tries to walk down a street in Pal- in, in Gaza, yeah. they're a sniper target. They're a target. Yeah. Um, anytime they break into a house, like go through a door. Yeah. There's a possibility of some kind of booby trap or just somebody sitting on the other side with a weapon. Yeah. Um, they like, how do you move from house to house in that kind of situation? You well, can't go into the street. The, you got to go through the walls. The thing, the things I've heard is one, like you just level it. Like you just, well, but that would create, it. that would create an international reaction. I think you think, so? I mean, I think that there would be too many pictures of Palestinian kids bloody in the street for that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that they can really do that. They'll, they'll level a portion of Gaza. Like yeah. there will be a reaction. They're going to knock yeah. down some buildings. Yeah. They already have. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't think that they're flattening all of Gaza because it would, it would go on too long and it would create too much bad, publicity for the Israeli government. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, time will only tell. Like, right. You know, um, and, um, and I don't think that they can do a real invasion because I think it would be too costly for them. Even yeah. with, you know, with the, the military strength that they have, as opposed to the, the Palestinians that have very little. Yeah. Um, they've got enough. I mean, it would be like uh, us running through the, the, um, rice fields in Vietnam. Yeah. Same same situation. Yeah, right? that you just it's a not not. Yeah, you're on you're on the wrong turf. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're on their territory. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I don't know. I think that this 
becomes a big flare. Maybe the biggest one that there's been in a while, but you don't think I, I think that. it kind of burns out. Yeah. Um, we can only hope that that there that this does lead to some kind of real change. I mean, yeah. a real change is necessary. And so, like I was asked that question today today, like how do you how do you resolve this? Like what do you do from here? What's the answer? Yeah. And I, I don't know what the answer is, but you know, like I said, I think that there's too much historical grievance to just unwind it with any kind of ease. There's no easy answer yeah. to how to resolve this problem. Yeah. Um, there is the Arab peace initiative out there, um, uh, that the Arab countries have signed on to. And even, um, even like Hamas and Hezbollah have reluctantly approved. They yeah. didn't exactly sign on, but they said that they, that they could live with it. It was worth considering. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's to, that's a two state solution proposal going back to the 1967 borders. Yeah. Um, which I believe is the, the borders, uh, you know, it's, it's about Israel withdrawing from the occupied territories, et cetera. Yeah. I, I believe it's the borders where Israel has uh, something like 78% of historic Palestine and yeah. the Palestinians would get 22%. Now remember the UN um, divide was 55, 45. So, Israel yeah. would still be getting more than they had originally been granted by the UN originally, resolution. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Israel has said that that's a, a non-starter. Yeah. Well, why would they agree to that? Like, it well, doesn't make sense from their perspective. Yeah. Here's the thing though, is that it, the, the oppressor has to be the one that compromises in these kind of situations. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, because the, the other side just doesn't have anything to lose. They need yeah. to get something out of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the oppressed, there's no, they have nothing to compromise. Yeah. So it has to be the oppressor that compromise. It has to be the power yeah. that compromises uh, well, in order to resolve a conflict like and this. And here's the only way you get the, the power to compromise in this scenario. Um, and that is if the U.S. starts withdrawing some of our support, um, which... The world we live in currently, that's never going to happen. But if there was ever a way to unwind this, and I don't know that they're really, they're, as far as realistically, I don't see one. Yeah. But but the the thing that could happen is if the U.S. actually stepped back and became a true, um, what you might call it, um, a true diplomatic, diplomatic. Know, like a, well, yeah, mediator. But, yeah, mediator. Um, impartial mediator, and yeah. so didn't didn't favor one side over the other. Mm. Like we're a strong enough power that we could broker that and make it happen. Now it yeah. would be rough for years. Now yeah. it's one of those deals. Even regardless of any peace deal that's ever made, it's going to be rough for a while because there's so many people who are used to to performing and living under the terrorism mm -hmm. that it's going to take a long time for that to go away. Well, he, here's what I said when I was asked about this today is that one thing that I, that I know for certain is that this cannot be resolved as long as they're trading violence. Yeah. Like as long as there's violence, it can't be resolved period. Yeah. And so while I am generally, here's the, the moral problem that I run into and I'm not yeah. so sure it's such a, big problem actually. But I mean, certainly a question to, to ask yourself as a libertarian Yeah, is that there's going to have to be force applied to limit the force applied between these two. Yeah. There's going to have to be some third party that comes in and locks both sides down which and is, says, you can't do these things to each other. Which is the reason I think that the U S is the strong enough power to do that. Like to I come th in. Yeah. And I don't do think that. the U S is trustworthy. The enough. problem it will, we're not because of our history. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's where the change would have to come is we would have to, we would have to prove ourselves as truly an independent yeah. And that, and that's gonna gonna weigh favorably to each, like fairly mm. to each side, not yeah. favorably, fairly to each side. Yeah. Um, and but we're not that now. We're the opposite of that. No. Um. And maybe China. Maybe. I maybe mean, Russia. I, I, don't, I don't know China's history with all of this. I'm just like I mean, thinking. Putin actually of, had some good things to say about this just recently, saying almost exactly what you just said is that like yeah. you need somebody to step in and negotiate in good faith to try and understand 
what both sides want and need. Yeah. And and help craft an agreement where each side gets some some concessions. Gets enough. Yeah. And um, because neither side's going to get everything they want, but if each side can get enough, and what you're talking about here in this in this scenario is enough that they can go back to their people and say, "Look, this is the 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 representatives can." This come was back. a good deal for us. This was a good deal for <laughs> yeah. us. You know. Yeah. Um. And there's and, and while you're you're right that the Israelis kind of hold the power and have 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 the most out of this right now. Mm-hmm. There is a, a a plea that could be made that be like, "Look, like we're gonna lose some things here, but we're gonna gain peace." And mm. there, there's got to be at least um, enough people in the population to be like, well, that's worth it. Yeah. Well, it depends. I, I So I do have um, some questions about the use of force to achieve political goals. Yeah. Right? Well, we signed um, a thing about that. <laughs> well, but no, but here's the here's the real issue that this is how I, I justify it morally. OK. Is that really what we say is that we reject the use of force or coercion against peaceful people. Yeah. But neither side is peaceful in this case. Yeah. So you had, I, I think you can make a moral justification for the use of force to prevent the use of force by each against the other. Yeah. So, um, now the, <laughs> gosh, we, we're already at an hour and we got a whole nother section really, because yeah. we haven't talked about the money in this at all. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. I was all I'm gearing up to close out, man. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we could hold this all over for uh, next week. I mean, I'm sure that this stuff is still going to be going I, on I, next week. I think week. we should hold the money side over the next week. Okay. Um, I really do. Very well. Because like I say, that's I, I've been kind of gearing for the end here. <laughs> like, okay. Trying to come up with a, a positive spin to end on. And not that that was all positive, but well, I mean, that's that's the hope. Like, that's that's what... The goal should be. Mm-hmm. I, I think that people need to see the other side, and um, which is the because reason of was... the way the Israeli government controls those populations. You don't really see the other side. Well, no, and and here well, in the U.S., the the media and the government. But I repeat myself: mm-hmm. all give you only one side. Well, what I would recommend to people, just as a starter. Yeah. Um, is that there is a, I mentioned it earlier in the program, there's a documentary called Killing Gaza Yeah. Um, by Max Blumenthal and Dan Cohen. It's available for free on YouTube. Go to the YouTubes right now <laughs> yeah. and look up Killing Gaza documentary. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Max Blumenthal and Dan Cohen are two American Jews yeah. uh, that went to Gaza at the end of this, this conflict in 2014 and talked to people um, about what was going on. And it's they I think that they do a good job of like, uh, of showing the range of reactions from Palestinians yeah. there. Um, and it's, I will, I will warn you in advance. It, there are parts of it that are absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, the, you know, this is, I like, I actually listened to it again while I was at work today I, I could only kind of like half pay attention because i was doing payroll but um and a, a lot of it is in arabic so you have to read the to subtitles read yeah. and, and so forth but the voiceover is of course you know max blumenthal speaking english yeah um but it, it was really like there's a part where there's this um this old man who probably been in gaza since the 1960s yeah maybe longer maybe since the beginning yeah. Um, and, uh, he starts off and I don't speak Arabic. So like, I can't really, I can't pick up, I guess some of the nuance in the way he's inflecting Yeah. to, to pick this up at first. But he, he says, you know, he, he discovers that, that Max and Dan are Americans and he's like, Oh, we love Americans. You know, the Americans, they give us sandwiches and, uh, and you know, we really appreciate the Americans. They, they give us sandwiches. They give the Israelis bombs. <laughs> and, yeah. and so it becomes clear like that he's being facetious about this. Yeah. That, like, you know, we get sandwiches, they get bombs, they get to, bombs. to kill us with. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, but I didn't pick up on it at first and yeah. like, the, and, but then this guy gets like really worked up. Yeah. Um, and he's, and he's yelling and he's like, he's what you, 
he's like the bad example actually in a lot of ways. Yeah. And he's talking about, um, you know, this little kid behind him, he's like in 15 years, he's going to be building a nuclear bomb to, uh, to wipe out Israel. Now he goes on to say, because he watched his, uh, his uncle get martyred in front of him and he watched, you know, like all these people die around him at the hands of the Israelis. But yeah. you know, like he, he's one that's like preaching violence against the Israelis in response. Yeah. Um, and then there, you know, but there are others that are just like, Hey, you know, these things are happening to us and we're just people trying to live. Yeah. Like yeah. we're just trying to get by out here. Yeah. Um, and then you see some of the, um, the deaths that are of civilians that are result of Israelis that wouldn't be counted as, as casualties of the Israelis. Like, um, you know, people that were driven out of their homes and they're having to live in, in, um, containers, like, you know, the big container car things. Shipping can- yeah. Containers, shipping yeah. containers. Um, and they have a little kid that dies from exposure because they're not in a real home and it, the kid freezes in the night and, you know, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't have happened if they'd have, been able to stay in their house and um you know and and but then you see like this like some real humanity in some of these people they're like there's a part towards the end where they're they're hanging out actually in a in a shipping container yeah um with this family uh and they've got a fire lit in inside the shipping container because that's the only way they can well i know but that's the only way they can can survive yeah and um but they're like they're like singing and laughing and drinking and carrying on and just having yeah. Like j- just like people sitting around a campfire like having a, a fun time these two Americans and yeah. their translator and this family of Palestinians and it's just like really joyous and yeah. Anyway. It's a great it's a great documentary. It's yeah. it's really good. But like I said it's uh, like thinking about it, it has me tearing up a little bit because it is like there are parts of it that really are heartbreaking but you can see how these people are living out there. Yeah. And what they're dealing with. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that, that Megyn Kelly kept stressing on her podcast was, you know, these Palestinians, they've taken all these hostages, which I denounce. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but like the this idea that, that they're that there's somehow something different. And she says, you know, they're using these people as human shields. And the Israelis would never do that. And then but there's this story in that documentary about uh, like this this kid um, is he's probably 15, maybe something like that. Um, is talking about how the Israeli soldiers came and, and got him and his family out of the house and, and filed them all out, you know, uh, men, women, and children and shot the men and grabbed the children and, and held them in front of them as they broke into the next house. Yeah. So they're like literally using the kids as shields, you know, as they broke into the next house of Palestinians and like, well, no, actually it sounds like they are doing that. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's just not good guys in this. Th- yeah. This is another one of those situations and, yeah. and it can't be solved by violence. I just go back to that. Like as long as they're trading violence back and forth, this will never be solved. Yeah. Like there has to be a point where, yeah, I'm sorry, Megan and all those right wingers that really want this to be a fight. Like yeah. you have to call a ceasefire at some point. You yeah. want to resolve this problem? Genocide isn't the answer that we want. Yeah. And that's the answer that I hear over and over again. Well, and that's the only answer if you're not talking about a ceasefire. Yeah. Well, it is. Yeah. So. Um, so I, I hope this doesn't last long. I'm, yeah. I'm afraid that the, the, the problem that you run into any time that you're talking about war, though, yeah. is that there's going to be civilians suffering on both sides, suffering and dying on both sides. Yeah. Like, that's what really happens. Two... Government entities don't like each other and the civilians die. Yep. Every time. So, which is why I don't like governments. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, without governments, you don't have wars, you have fights. Yeah. <laughs> There's exactly. like a big difference. <laughs> yeah, there really is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. So, I guess we'll wrap up there. We'll pick up with some of this other stuff next time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, wait. So are we back next week or? That, that's what I was trying to think of. No, no, no. It's the week after that that I'm going out of town. So we're good I was next week. I today's the 12th, so that helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good next week. All right. Um, and we're actually good the week after that too. We just have to get together on We've Thursday. We've got to figure it out early. Yeah. 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 No, fair enough. 
Um, so yeah, we'll be back next week. And in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, like, and share, comment, subscribe, um, email your hate mail. <laughs> if if <laughs> Timmy any... at Michael at the Liberty Mike. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you may get some of that, uh-huh. but to just the people listening, if, if, if this was enlightening to you or like, you know, that type of thing, because this isn't a, the message we, we put out tonight is not a message that is out there in the mainstream at all. Mm. Um, so if you, if you liked it or if you feel like people need to hear it, share it because this is, this is important stuff. Mm. Like we, I know we talk about a lot of nonsense sometimes, but this ain't nonsense. And there's a lot of people that are uneducated on this subject. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just wish this message would get out there more. And the, I think the part of this that I want to emphasize is that that I'm not pro-Palestinian in this conflict. No, we haven't done And I'm done not pro-Israeli a... either. But just because I'm not pro-Israeli doesn't mean I'm not that I am well, pro-Palestinian. And that's the reason I think that this podcast in particular is so important is because we did not pick a side during this the whole time. Mm-hmm. All we did was lay out what's going on. Yeah. Um, like that's, well, that's try the and conver- put it in context. That's the conversation we were having tonight. And, but you're not hearing that anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what irritates me more than anything is that, that this, this idea is not out there at all. Like there's no context to any of this. And, and that's how bad things happen. That's how big wars get bigger and all of that. Like it, it feeds off itself. Yeah. Well, you know, it, we've spent a lot of time or, like I've really tried to make it a point of um, reminding the audience who the enemy is. Yeah. When we go through these things, and I guess more importantly, who isn't? Yeah. The the enemy and the and, and in this context, the enemy is the warmongers and the oppressive governments. The enemy is not the Israelis. It's not the Jews. It's not the Palestinians. It's not the Muslims. It's not the Christian Palestinians either. It's not. It's not Ukraine. It's not Russia. It's not any of the, like, it's not the people. Yeah. It's the warmongers and the oppressive governments and the people that want to, you know, renew and perpetuate a cycle of violence. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. The people that are actually doing the violence, like Mm -hmm. they're the enemy, but like other than that, like the, the regular everyday people are not it. Yeah. So, um, and on that, Happy night. <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, I just feel like I had to get that out there, man. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, man, I, I hope people understand. They're, like, this is one of those topics. We're never going to finish this. I know. Like, I know we just started this, like, yeah. the closing, and we can't get through it. Yeah. Um, the, this is another one of those um, topics that's just highly politically charged for some reason where it shouldn't be. Yeah. Um. And that people address with with a complete ignorance of history and absolutely zero nuance, yeah. and and it just creates a bigger conflict between people than needs to ex- than than should exist. Exactly. Um, I mean, there's certainly reason to be upset. Like I was upset looking at those images too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like as, mm-hmm. as you should be. Um, but there is a historical context to this that a lot of people don't understand and. Um, the, the answer isn't to wipe a people off a map. Yeah. What, regardless of which side of the line they're on. Yeah. Yeah. Simple enough concept. <laughs> I know. It seems like it should be. All right. So, um, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. All right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. <laughs>